Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and today we are here to read the second part, or the second section, of Chillers. So if you don't have a copy of this, I understand, because uh, it's very hard to find this book. Uh, this is, came out in the 90s, and it's called The Saga of the Alien Costume, and it's essentially a retelling of Spider-Man's first encounter with Venom, but in a kind of a novel form, but a novel form for kids. So it's written with big font, big words, big spacing between the words, and then some images from some of the comic books, which I'll have flash on screen as I read through this book. And in the last episode, which I'll link down below if you haven't watched it yet, please go watch that so that you're caught up and you know where we are in the story. We read chapters one through eight in the first episode. So basically the first 33 pages or so of this 98 page book, essentially what it is. That's around 100 pages. And today we're gonna cover chapters nine onward up to, it's page 34 to 66 or 67. We're gonna go up until that point and we'll save the last part of it uh, for like later into July. I'll probably post it up at the end of July. So in this episode, we're gonna catch up real quick and just remind you in the last episode, Spider-Man obviously got the alien costume and now he's using it around the city and it's causing him to be a little bit more violent, a little more extreme than he normally is. So much so that after, you know, kind of saves the day and saves these two people, he starts getting an attitude and then as he's swinging by in his new black costume, there's a little kid that looks up and says, uh, Daddy, uh, you know, and his, his dad's like, oh, it's Spider-Man. He's like, I don't think so, Dad. That doesn't look like Spider-Man at all. And uh, that kid is right. <laughs> that kid has some good instincts. So we're going to find out. I mean, it is Peter Parker, obviously, and it is Spider-Man, but the costume has, is starting to change him. And we're going to find out how much so in this section of the book as we dive into Chapter 9. Spider-Man's new costume worked like a charm. During a lengthy battle at the warehouse, he leapt higher, he shot longer webs, he soared to dizzying new heights, and he was able to round up a band of criminals ready to hijack a shipment of gold. Now, back at home, Peter Parker was exhausted. All he wanted to do was get out of his costume and get into bed. I'd like to remove the costume now, he said. The costume slipped easily off of him and into a neat pile on the floor. He was too tired to analyze what just happened. He did, however, notice the costume was giving off an odd odor. This smells a little gamey, he said. After giving the costume a good rinsing in the sink, he draped it on the chair to dry. Those other guys may like traveling around the galaxy, but I'm strictly a friendly neighborhood superhero. Ugh, a tired one at that. So maybe my new costume can read my mind, Peter thought as he trudged over to his bed. But it hasn't hurt me. In fact, it's a better costume than my old one. Maybe it'll work out after all. He yawned again. I've got to get some sleep. He fixed the covers on his bed and climbed in. No sooner than his head hit the pillow, he was asleep. And then suddenly, unexpectedly, his costume began to stir. Serpent-like, it slithers along the cold floor, moving closer and closer, even closer, to its unsuspecting target, Peter Parker. Chapter 10 Flowing across the floor, it silently advances on the sleeping adventurer, as if contemplating the horrible consequence of its next action, it pauses for one brief moment, and then it strikes. Peter never felt the costume consume him. It wrapped around his entire body like a blanket made of skin. It had found a way to be near him even though he never requested it to. And every time Peter's chest rose taking a breath, the costume breathed right along with him. Each time his muscles twitched, the costume twitched with them. Every time he moved in his sleep, the costume moved with him. It was testing him out, getting to know his moves, his thoughts, the rhythm of his heartbeat, the pattern of his brain waves. It sunk into his skin, mixing with his blood cells. It tested his DNA. It probed his dreams. In a sense, it was becoming another Peter Parker. Oozing from head to toe in black slime, Peter slept. He never knew or felt a thing. Chapter 11 the next morning, Peter awoke more exhausted than he had ever been before he went to sleep. Minutes earlier, the costume had sensed Peter waking and returned to drape itself over the chair. Peter stirred around in bed for a few minutes. He wondered why sleep brought him no relief. He looked at the clock. It read 3.20. In the afternoon! I should call Reed Richards, he thought as he crawled out of bed. He might be able to run some tests to see why I've been so exhausted since returning from outer space. Peter stretched. It didn't make him feel any more awake. He yawned as he dialed the numbers for Reed's telephone. Reed's phone rang only once before he picked up. Hello? Reed, it's Spider-Man, Peter said, guarding his secret identity. Thanks a lot for returning my call. After a full day, Reed complained. 
What do you mean? Peter asked. I called yesterday and left you a message, Reed explained. Didn't you get it? No, that old machine only works when it feels like it, Peter said. I guess it didn't feel like working yesterday. Listen carefully, Spider-Man. Doc Connors told me about that costume you brought back from outer space. It is important that I test that material to make sure it's safe. Well, I'll tell you right now it's safe, Peter replied. It's got strange powers, but it serves me pretty well. Reed grew silent. Hello? Peter asked. Peter, please, Reed said, the urgency in his voice growing. Get over here as soon as you can. Every minute counts. As a scientist, I must advise that any alien material that has strange powers must be checked out, no matter how safe you think it is. Well, Peter said, I just wanted you to help me with my exhaustion problem, but if it makes you feel better to test the material, then be my guest. I'll be over in about half an hour. I will prepare the lab, Spider-Man. Peter replaced the phone on the receiver. I really should get some hard answers about the costume, he said. He turned his back for a moment to look out the window at a passing fire engine. The costume trembled on the chair. Chapter 12 After wheeling the costume back onto his body, Spider-Man was off and swinging through the city to Four Freedoms Plaza. It took him no time to swing his way to his destination. He clung to the side of the building and eased open a window on the 22nd floor. Once inside, he walked down the long corridor to Reed's lab. As Spider-Man entered the room, Reed barely recognized him. He never saw Spider-Man wearing any other outfit than the red and blue standard. The alien costume made Reed nervous. Spider-Man, good to see you, Reed said, approaching the web-slinger. Reed reached out, and the two friends shook hands. Usually, Reed shook hands as a friendly gesture. This time, he just wanted to touch the foreign material. Reed, look, I really need your help here, Spider-Man said, wondering why Reed was taking so long shaking his hand. I've been oversleeping since I got back to Earth. Can you run some tests on me, see if I have some kind of super jet lag? Reed breaks the handshake. When I test the material of the suit, I think we might find out more about your problem. Suddenly, the costume sensed a threat. It clenched tightly on Spider-Man's stomach. He doubled over. Are you okay, Spider-Man? Reed asked. Yeah, I'm just a little hungry, he lied. Do you think I could grab a sandwich from you? Sure, Reed said. He buzzed his intercom on his desk. Johnny Storm here. Johnny, our friend Spider-Man is here, Reed said. He's a bit hungry. Do you think you could bring something in for him? You got it, he replied. One PB&J coming right up. Reed let go of the intercom button. Now shall we begin with the demonstration of those weird properties you've been telling me about? Moments later, the tests begin. Hmm. No trace of any mechanical structures, Reed said. Where can that webbing be originated from? It can apparently mimic any outward appearance that you can picture in your mind. Fascinating. And the way it flows on you on and off. It's amazing. Moments after the tests ended, a wave of fatigue hit Spider-Man. I'm gonna go home. I'm beat. Reed, you'll call me with the results? Stay close to home, Spider-Man. I hope to call you within 24 hours, Reed replied, already operating the testing equipment. Once Spider-Man left, Johnny Storm sensed Reed was deep in thought and very troubled. What's wrong, Reed? He asked. Johnny, it's my best guess that there is a serious problem with that costume. I only hope I can find a solution before it's too late. Chapter 13 Swinging in through his open window, Spider-Man scraped his back on a jagged piece of metal in the window frame. Ow! He cried. His costume had ripped. His back was bloody and scratched. But in an instant, the costume started to mend itself. By the time Spider-Man turned to check in the mirror, the costume had completely rebuilt itself. There was no longer a tear in the costume. Wow, if only my skin would do that, he said, still in some pain. Eager for sleep, he wheeled the costume off his body. It slipped down and curled up in a ball at his feet like a puppy. Isn't that cute, Peter said. He was so tired all he could do was put on his old ratty bathrobe. He didn't even make it to his bed. He collapsed in his easy chair. Soon, a troubled sleep claims the tired, brooding young man. But shortly after it does, his uncanny costume begins to stir. Serpent-like once again, it glides across the floor, reaching for him, flowing over him until it covers his entire body. And then, Spider-Man rose from his chair. He walked mechanically toward the window. 
he shot a web to the rooftop across the way and started slinging and zinging through the city. The trouble was, Peter Parker didn't want to be Spider-Man right now. And in fact, he wasn't. It was the costume who was Spider-Man. Peter was sound asleep under the black mask. If we could peer beneath his mask, we would see that Peter Parker is oblivious to all of this. He is asleep, and the costume is in control of his every move. Chapter 14 The next day, Peter Parker awoke in his bed. He had no idea how he got there. The last thing he remembered was falling asleep in his chair. The worst part was, his body felt like it had been in a serious battle the night before, one that he had no memory of. He saw that the costume was still on the floor where he had left it, just like a puppy. Maybe I'll give Reed a call, he thought. Or maybe I should get out of bed first. After all, it's 4.15. Oh, no, not again. I'm out of control, Peter said, throwing the covers off and rising out of bed. Reed better have some answers for me today. He went to his closet to find something to wear. He had to shoot some pictures today, or else he was going to be fired for sure. Pushing the hangers of old clothes aside, he stumbled on a spare red and blue costume. He took the costume from the rack and brought it out into the light to inspect it. I miss this costume, he thought, as he stared at the new one on the floor. Maybe I'll put it in my camera bag just in case Reed keeps the new one for testing. As he loaded up his camera bag with his old costume and his equipment, his new costume stirred with jealousy. It wanted to be a part of Peter, now. It made a move towards him, but just then, bring, bring, bring. Sensitive to the sound, the costume retreated. Peter ran over to the phone to answer the call. Hello? Spider-Man? It was Reed. What's up, Reed? Got any news on why I'm so tired? You know, I just woke up and... Spider-Man, get over here right now. Reed's tone was urgent. We must do something about that costume. What is it? You can tell me now. Can't... No! Just get over here now. Chapter 15. Frantically, Spider-Man swung through the city. Reed seemed so nervous on the phone. I can't imagine what's going on, he thought. On the verge of exhaustion, he finally saw Reed Richards' headquarters, Four Freedoms Plaza, in the distance, and luckily an open window into which he could swing. Landing inside, Spider-Man called out, Reed, I'm here. Where are you? I got here as fast as I could. Turning to walk down the corridor, Spider-Man's muscles started to seize. He dropped the bag he had carried. What's going on? Spider-Man questioned. He rubbed his arms to stop the twinges of pain, but it didn't help. Halfway down the main hall, his legs buckled and he fell to the floor hard. He crouched over in crippling pain. I don't understand. I cruise the city like this all the time. I can't be this out of shape, he said through clenched teeth. Reed, Spider-Man shouted. Reed, help me. Where are you? His pleading voice searched for a response. Meanwhile, in his lab, Reed studied the lab results over and over. If this is true, if my findings are fact, he said, then Spider-Man is in more trouble than I thought. How's it going, Reed? Johnny asked. Almost through. Just rechecking this data. These results are almost too startling to believe. He turned to Johnny Storm and spoke softly. I don't know, Johnny. I'm afraid we might be too late to save him. Down the hall, Spider-Man talked to himself and struggled to remain conscious through his agonizing pain. Can't stop the pain? Why can't my costume stop it? It knows me. It needs me. With the war in his body raging, Spider-Man curled up in a ball, if only to find a moment of comfort. Some call this the fetal position, but in this case, fatal position might have been more accurate. In desperation, he let out one final shattering scream for help. Reed! But no one responded. No one was coming to Spider-Man's rescue. Chapter 16 Reed thought he had heard a small voice calling his name. He looked up from his computer and furrowed his brow. Johnny, did you say something? Johnny shook his head and returned to work, but Reed asked him to check the hallway. Opening the door to the secured lab, Johnny heard a faint, pleading call coming from down the hall. Help me. Out here, Reed! Down the hallway, Johnny saw a black heap rolled up in the corner. He called back inside. Reed, I think it's Spider-Man! Bounding from his chair, Reed ran to join Johnny. Together they raced to help Spider-Man. What happened? Reed asked. Tell me what's wrong. It's everything, Spider-Man said, gasping for air. My arms, my legs, my stomach. I, I think I overextended myself trying to get here too fast. Reed Richards and Johnny Storm looked at each other. Was it too late? Lean on me, my friend. 
Reed said, draping Spider-Man's arm over his shoulder. We must get you to my lab immediately. Reed led the aching Spider-Man down the hall. With Torch guiding the way, they slowly made their way to the lab. Reed steadied his friend and set him down in a chair. Johnny, close the door. With the door securely closed and locked, Reed drew a deep breath. He knelt in front of his friend and with a moment of hesitation finally spoke. It's the costume, Spider-Man. What about it? Please, Reed, just spit it out. You are wearing a highly evolved symbiote, a sentient being which was attached itself to you both mentally and physically. Wait, wait, you mean it's alive? And with words spoken more of frustration than compassion, Reed said, Spider-Man, the costume, it is alive. It's some kind of alien. That costume is bonding to you. Every cell in your body is now under its control. Chapter 17 Reed's words sent unholy waves of terror ripping through Spider-Man's body. His thoughts and his heart raced a mile a minute. He didn't know what to say or do at first. I'm trying to get it off me, Reed, but it won't let go. It usually obeys my commands, but it's not coming off. Yow! I can't. I'm ordering it to get off me, but it won't budge. In fact, it's getting tighter, crushing me. It's just as I feared. The costume is afraid of being separated from its host. It's attempting to permanently graft itself to Spider-Man's body. It's too late. The bonding process must be complete, Reed shouted. He paced the floor like a caged animal. Spider-Man did everything he could to rid himself of the costume. He tried mentally willing it off. He tried ripping it from his body, but the material had joined with his skin. Every effort gave him more pain, more misery. As he scratched at the costume, he felt as if razors were tearing through his flesh. His blood boiled in his veins every time he thought of removing it. He felt his tendons snap like rubber bands. His hands and feet felt like they were on fire. Reed, it won't let me go. Please tell me what's happening to me, Spider-Man cried as he flung himself around the room. But Reed didn't know what to say. His mind raced for a way to remove the costume from Spider-Man's body. The costume clung to Peter with all its alien might. The force started to crush his skull. It was almost as if Spider-Man's body was trapped underneath the weight of a freight train. He could feel every bone in his body bending back and forth under pressure. The costume was alive, and it had a death grip on Spider-Man. It's bonded with you. That's why it can't come off, Reed tried to explain. It is some kind of parasite, and you're the host. It read your mind. It became your friend. It needs you to survive. That's why it refuses to come off now. Do something, please. It won't. I can't hold on much longer. Chapter 18 Reed had one desperate idea. One desperate idea that could separate the alien being from its host. But it might just kill Spider-Man in the process. We must try, he thought. It's our only hope. Spider-Man, hold on, Reed shouted. His ultra-extendable arm flexed and weaved through the halls. It groped every corner trying to find the machine that would save the world's greatest web-slinger or end his pain forever. I have it, Reed cried as he grabbed the device. At an alarming speed, his arm returned to where he stood with a sonic blaster firmly clenched in his hand. Wow, Johnny exclaimed. That baby sends off sound waves that could rock the socks off anything. Reed clutched the device and moved toward a sinking Spider-Man. Johnny, stand near Spider-Man, he commanded. I'm going to try to blast the alien from him with sound waves. Reed, do something, Spider-Man begged. My head, I feel like my eyes are going to burst from their sockets. I can't take the pressure on my skull much longer. Hang on, Spider-Man, you're about to get the undressing of your life, Johnny shouted. Reed struggled with his sonic gun. He had not used it in years. The switches were jammed and he had trouble turning it on. Finally, at his most desperate, the machine emitted powerful invisible sonic waves. Reed aimed his sonic blaster straight at the alien costume. Are you sure the thing's going to work? Johnny asked. No, but we can pray, Reed Richards said. Spider-Man heard those words and knew how desperate everything must have been. Reed Richards was a man of science, but here he was, aiming a weapon at Spider-Man, praying that it worked. Hurry, please, Reed. The intense vibrating waves of sound engulfed Spider-Man. It took every last bit of strength he had left to withstand the pain. Still, the alien costume clung to every cell in Peter's body like a billion tiny vice grips. It came a long way through the galaxy to get this far. It found the perfect host on which to live. It was not prepared to give up so easily. In agony, Spider-Man collapsed. He lay dying on the floor. 
With Spider-Man in peril and the suit not separating from him, how will this story end? You'll have to come back next month to find out, true believers. This book is really awesome. It's a lot of fun. I really like reading it and doing the voices. It's, it's a blast. I hope you guys are enjoying those too. And we have about 30 pages left in the book, uh, basically the final chapters, where we will get the suit separated, hopefully from Spider-Man, and everything will be okay, which, you know, most of us know that story, and we know that's how it's going to turn out. But we're also going to get our introduction into Venom um, in this as well. And like I said, in the month of July, we're going to be covering all the Spider-Man stories where he was bonded with the black costume. And then we're going to read the final chapters of this Chiller's book as the conclusion of Peter Parker month, which is going to be the month of July on our channel. So we will talk about some Venom stuff, any movie news that pops up, obviously we'll cover that. Uh, but mainly our month when we talk about comics is going to be focused on the years that Spider-Man had the black costume. And that'll cover everything from the original Alien costume saga to the newer Peter David miniseries that have been coming out over the past few years, uh, leading all the way up till now, where we just had one come out for King in Black. So, uh, and then we have another one coming up soon with uh, the Hulk in it. It's going to have a uh, Spider-Man in the Black Costume teaming up with the Incredible Hulk, which should be a lot of fun because, once again, it's written by Peter David um, and art by Greg Land. So we're going to have a really fun month in July regarding Peter Parker stuff. So if you're a fan of that era of Spider-Man stories and those stories where he has the black costume, and if you like this episode, we got plenty more of stuff like this coming in the month of July. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of it. Let me know your feedback and thoughts down in the comments below. And we can continue our conversation about this. You know, how am I doing? Am I doing all right reading wise? Anything you want me to try to do next time? Let me know. And if I can make it happen, if I can improve in any way, I definitely will. But thank you for being here for this. I really appreciate your support as always. And we'll see you all in the next one. Peace.